Well, folks, welcome. Welcome to today's Coffee with Job. This is Friday. Uh, I think this is our 55th one. So they're all up there on YouTube and Vimeo. Uh, what you need for this is a coffee or whatever your beverage. And you need this, your Bible. And we're going through the book of Job and we're thinking about questions that affect us in our lives. Um, to be honest, I find it really quite refreshing. I'm... There's so many things that discourage. Yesterday I heard uh, an evangelical leader say that all oh, human beings weren't descended from Adam. Uh, then I had other people just accuse me of various things. People saying that, uh, oh, because I don't buy into all the climate change hysteria, that therefore I'm, you know, they question my commitment to Christ even, and, or my commitment to care for his creation and just... There's so many other things as well, so many things within the church, so many things within your own life, so many things within yourself, that you ask why? And especially you see things. So I remember I had a poster at university of a Vietnamese soldier who was being shot in the back and his arms were up like that. And just the one question, why? And that why really bothered me. And that why is really, what's the purpose of meaningless suffering? We can understand meaningful suffering. I was at the dentist this week, and there's a little bit of suffering involved in that. Well, we can understand that to some degree, can't we? But it, it seems meaningless. There are things that seem so arbitrary and so cruel. Now, Job, in chapter 19, this is his sixth speech. Um, Bildad had asked him, how long will you not listen? Job asked, how long will you continue to torment me? Stop tormenting me and leave me alone. Uh, and the first, he has a complaint. And this is, we'll read verse 1 to 12. Then Job replied, how long will you torment me and crush me with words? Incidentally, isn't that easy to do that, to crush people with words? Ten times now you have reproached me. Shamelessly you attack me. If it is true that I have gone astray, my error remains my concern alone. Indeed, if you would exalt yourselves above me and use my humiliation against me, then know that God has wronged me. This is his complaint. God has wronged me and drawn his net around me. Though I cry, violence, I get no response. Though I call for help, there is no justice. He has blocked my way so that I cannot pass. He has shrouded my paths in darkness. He has stripped me of my honour and removed the crown from my head. He tears me down on every side till I am gone. He uproots my hope like a tree. His anger burns against me. He counts me among his, his enemies. His troops advance in force. They build a siege ramp against me and encamp around my tent. This is Job's great complaint. There is no justice. God is portrayed as like an enemy soldier besieging his tent. God has obstructed and darkened and stripped and decrowned and torn down and uprooted his hope. And God is angry and the one who alienates. Now, was Job right to feel like this? He was certainly wrong in his perception of God because God was not angry with him. Perhaps, though, his greatest complaint is that God is silent. And that is true. God was being silent, as contrasted with the chattering of his friends. So on the one hand, there's the chattering of his friend. And where is God? And sometimes I feel that about this world, by the way. You know, if you're on social media and maybe get off it, um, physician, heal thyself. The constant chatter, 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 chatter. The chatter on the news, the chatter elsewhere. We hear all these voices, but we don't hear God. And so he feels rejected by God. And he's saying, I'm trapped, I'm trapped. Is there a way out? Well, I, I think sometimes we do have that sense of being enclosed, entrapped. And I go back to Psalm 18, where it talks about he brought me into a spacious place. He freed me. Job's complaint is real. Job's feeling is real. Job's analysis is not correct. God is not angry with him. And Job as yet doesn't see the solution, that it's the Lord who will bring him into a spacious place. And I say that for you as well. You're trapped. You may be struggling in different things, but God will bring you into an open, spacious place. And we'll see more of how that happens 
next week. Uh, have a look at uh, Romans 8, or The Hope. We were doing that on Sunday. I'll probably put it up a wee bit earlier. And also we've got a new podcast out called The Ask Podcast and got a wonderful interview with Bishop Rod Chiswell that's just gone up uh, today. So I hope you can enjoy those things. See you on Sunday or on Monday. God bless. Bye.